So with WordPress 5 not too far away, what that brings with it is the new Gutenberg editor, and that's going to become part of the core of WordPress. Now, if you use Oxygen to build your WordPress websites, or you're looking to use it in the future, you may be asking yourself, will Oxygen work alongside the new Gutenberg editor? But in this video, I just want to demonstrate how they'll coexist with each other. So let's just jump over to WordPress and take a look at how Oxygen and Gutenberg can work together. My name is Paul C and this is WP Touch, the channel where we create beautiful WordPress websites. If it's your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking that bell icon below to be notified every time new videos are uploaded. Okay, this is a video that's been sponsored by the team over at Oxygen and I just want to demonstrate how we can use Oxygen and Gutenberg together to create your own custom designs. So this is the example we're working with. It's a very, very simple page layout. We've used a header and footer, and the information in the center is all being pulled in from the actual Gutenberg editor. So you can see a very, very simple, some text, some images, a featured image, and some meta information alongside a title. But how do we actually create all this? Let's just jump onto the dashboard of WordPress and take a look at what tools we need. Now, first of all, I've created a couple of posts ready. You can see we have a Gutenberg post at the top. And if I just open that up, you'll see that we've used the Gutenberg editor to create just some basic information. Like I say, just using images, text, and a featured image. So as long as we have all of that in place, the next thing we need to do is jump up into Oxygen itself and start building out the template we're going to use. So if we come to Oxygen on the left-hand side, we're going to come to the template section. And this will show then any of the templates we've created. As you can see, I already have one there. We're not going to use this for this particular post layout, so we can ignore that. What we want to do is click on Add New Template. Once we do that, the first thing we've got to do is give it a name. So we're going to say this is going to be the Gutenberg Test Template. Okay, so we've named it. Once we've named it, we just click on Publish, and that will then give us the ability to start working with the Oxygen options and tell it where we want to use this template, how we want to use it, and so on. So the first thing we want to do is tell it where this template is going to be used. At the moment, we want to make sure that we pull this into the singular post. So we only want this to display for a singular post. Click Expand on there, and you can see we now have a range of different options we can apply it to. All post types, pages, media, custom CSS, and so on. You've also got things like any of the custom post types we might have created. So you can see video posts is a custom post type that I've covered in a previous video using Oxygen. For this example, we're going to keep it really simple. We just want to use posts. So this is now going to apply to all of the singular post pages that we create. So any content that's a post will be displayed using this template. Once we've done that, we're going to click on Update again because we've made some changes, and now we can start using the Edit with Oxygen option. So we're going to click and open that up. That'll take us over into the Oxygen Builder itself, and we can start fleshing out the template that we want to build. So this is the Oxygen Visual Editor. This is where we start to create our templates. Now, I've covered this in a lot more detail in its own dedicated video on how we use Oxygen. I'll link that in the description below, so I'd recommend checking that out if you haven't already taken a look. Okay, so what we're going to do is create some basic template sections. A header, a footer, and a content area that's going to pull in the Gutenberg information. We're going to use predefined layouts for the header and footer, but we can, if we want to, create those from scratch. Just for brevity in this video, I'm going to use some predefined ones. So what we're going to do is click on Add. We're going to scroll down until we get to the Library option. In there, we've got Design Sets, which we'll expand out, and you can see there's five different design sets we can use as the basis for these different templates. We're just going to use Atomic for now. We'll let that expand that out. And then we'll choose the option. We've got sections and elements, templates, or pages. Let's open the sections and elements. And the first thing we want to do is just go to the headers. And we're going to pull in just this simple header sort of design. And you see that now appears at the top. We'll go back in and repeat the same process, this time coming down to the footer section. And we'll choose a footer that we think is going to be relevant to the design that we're working with. And we'll choose this one. Now, with our header and footer is in place, the next thing we want to do is put the container where we actually put the information from Gutenberg. So again, we're going to come to Add. This time, we're going to jump back at our design sets. We come right the way back up until we get to Basics. And from Basics, we're just simply going to choose the section. We click on there. That now adds it at the bottom, which obviously is not where we want it. But we can rectify that very easily. Come over to the Structure section on the top right-hand side. That'll show us all the various different elements that build up the entire page template we're working with. As you can see, we've got the simple header, the footer, and our section. Drag that up, position it where we want, and that now puts it exactly where we need it. 
Now, when you're creating your layouts, it makes sense to start labeling things. So you can see at the moment, this just says section 29. Let's just click on this little hamburger menu and we'll say we want to set this and rename it. So we'll rename that and we'll call this body content. Get rid of the section 29 at the end. That now makes a lot more sense of what was going in there. So there's our container, there's our header, there's our footer. We can now start pulling in the various bits of dynamic data that make up our post. So we come back over to add. This time we're going to come down onto WordPress and you can see you have the option for dynamic data. We we'll click on dynamic data and there's all the options we have to pull in that dynamic information that will populate this template based upon what the user clicks on and is viewing. So in this example, whichever single post they're looking at, we can now pull in the relevant bits of information. So let's start this off really simple. And what we'll do is we say we put the featured image in. So we'll just click on that. That'll drop in the featured image and you can see it's previewing our Gutenberg post. You can see that at the top it says previewing. We can click on there and any posts we have on our site, we can simply come in and choose any of these to use those as the basis of the predefined layout or the information we can see in the main window. So it's a great way of making sure when you're creating content templates that they look the way you want and work well with the various different components that build up the actual content. Okay, so we'll leave that as the Gutenberg one, that's fine. We'll leave the content image there, that's also fine. We'll just simply come down now, come back to add. This time we're going to add in the title. So we'll click and you can see that now positions that underneath. And if we come over to the right hand side and expand at the body content area, you can now see the different components are starting to be displayed in there. So image for our featured image, the heading, if we expand that out, you can see we've got a span tag in there. So if we want to start using these with CSS to style things that go above and beyond the kind of style that you can apply inside Oxygen itself, then you can reference these things and you can start naming them and doing a lot of cool things with it. Like I say, let's keep it really simple on this example. Okay, so there's the title of the post. There's our featured image. Let's go and put the actual content in. So let's click on add again. And this time we're going to come down and we're going to say that we want to have the content. Click and you can see that now fills that out below and all the content is pulled in. Now, obviously, if you want to put any more information in there, any more of these dynamic pieces of information or static information, we can do that very easily. And we can reorder things and adjust things and do everything we want from the structure panel on the right hand side. So it's very easy to start creating these more complex layouts just by using these tools. So now that we've got the various components of our template in place, we can now go through the process of styling things to make it look the way that we want. So we can easily come in and we can use any of the tools that are part of Oxygen to start controlling this. So where I've got the main content area selected at the moment, you can see the primary tab tells us this using things like is inheriting the font, the text color, the font size and the weight and so on. We can change that if we want to. We can set this to anything we want. Let's just say we want to put open sans in there. We can click, add that in. We can change the text color if we want to, adjust this to anything we want. And you can see as we make those changes, it reflects on the page itself. So everything is updated in pretty much real time. So you can fine tune all of this. You can adjust the font size on there to get exactly what we want. So let's just say 16 points. And we'll say we want to put a font weight of 300 in. Looks absolutely terrible, but you can see we can adjust and control this. So that's the basics that you can do on there. But jump to the advanced tab and we have a ton more options available. So we can adjust backgrounds. We can put background colors in there, sizing and spacing, typography and so on. All these kinds of good things. So with the tools in the advanced section, if you want to get stuck in and really start to configure and fine tune every aspect of your template, you can do that. If you want to go above and beyond what Octogen gives you, you can start creating custom CSS, even hand coding your JavaScript to give it even more cool functions. Well, that pretty much wraps up this demo of Gutenberg alongside Oxygen. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. And don't forget to let me know why in the comment section below. As always, I'd love to get your feedback on what you think of Oxygen, especially using it alongside Gutenberg. Do you think this is a great way of building your websites moving forward? And what would you like to see in that integration in the future? As always, my name has been Paul C. This has been WP Tetson. Until next time, take care.